This is the brand new True Spec 16 by 20 inch hybrid auto open heat press by Heat Press Nation. In this video, we're going to show you how to unbox and set up your heat press, and we're also going to do our first press. Your True Spec 16 by 20 inch hybrid auto open heat press is going to come in two boxes, as you see here. Now this bigger box is going to house the main body of the heat press and in this smaller box we have the control housing and the 16 by 20 inch lower platen. We're going to start unboxing with the smaller one. Okay, first thing you see here, we have our satisfaction guarantee. It's going to have your warranty information, how to contact us, etc. Nice to have that here. Now, you probably already found this and scanned the code. That's probably how you're watching this video. But just in case, uh, that's what this card is for assembly instructions. And then on the other side is just a reminder of what comes in each box. All right, I'll set that to the side. There is a little silica gel pack. You can just throw that away. And here we go. Now, I do actually recommend this is going to slide right out. I like to just move it all in the foam packaging, just to keep it nice and safe. And here we go. It's our 16 by 20 inch lower platen. Let's carry that out. There we go. That's going to do it for box two. Now, for box one, we highly recommend having a second person to help you lift the machine out of the box on the floor and bring it up onto your table. All right, now that we've unboxed the main part of our machine, let's go ahead and unpackage it and get it all set up. Now, all these foam packaging inserts should slip off pretty easily. While they aren't custom fit to be nice and snug, shouldn't be difficult at all to slide them off. There's no need to tear them or cut them. And what just fell out right here is gonna be our power cord. Make sure you hang on to that. We're gonna need that in a moment. And let's get rid of this protective plastic wrap. Now you will notice this little tag it says must remove this bolt before use. It's for shipping. That's what keeps everything closed. We're going to leave that in for a few more moments uh, while we bring over our control box. Now in the back you have our three different wire assemblies here. Uh, these are all going to connect to our control box and they're held tight by this little bitty zip tie. We're just gonna wanna either pry that off or cut it. Make sure you're careful to not actually cut the wires. There we go. Those are all gonna be fine. I'm gonna let those sit right here while we bring over our control box. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove the plastic covering from my four wiring harnesses. And we're gonna connect them. Now the cool thing here is that everything is pretty easy. It's hard to mix it up. Oh, I should say it's actually impossible to mistake it. So we're going to slide our housing slightly in and then start plugging everything in all the way. This is the main power to the heating element. There we go. And then we have two other cables here. Now they're both four prong, but one is going to be a male end and the other a female end to prevent any mix up here. Now there's two more cables here, the main power cable uh, and this final connector. Those we're gonna have to connect once it's been installed. So let's go ahead and rotate it down. We're gonna gently drop it in and what I like to do is secure it just with just one screw very loosely. That's just gonna kind of hold it there. On the other side, I'll do the same thing. Just very loosely insert a screw all right, now with the top screws in place, you'll notice our computer box has a little bit of play on it. It's totally normal. What we want to do is now inspect the magnetic sensor that's right here in the front. Now, this magnetic sensor is what uh, communicates with the auto open mechanism. It helps keep your machine shut and release automatically when your timer reaches zero. However, if there's a gap there that's too far, it's not going to trigger the sensor 
and your auto open is not going to function properly. It's actually not going to engage. Uh, so when we're setting up our computer box, you want to just make sure that it's very close. In this case, ours is touching. If you have a gap of about one millimeter or so, that's perfectly fine. Uh, you want to just kind of seat the housing uh, so it's going to trigger that sensor. And once it's at the proper position, now we can go back and we can loosely insert the screws on the rest of the screw holes. Once those are in, then we can tighten everything up. An important thing to remember is to not tighten everything until all of the screws have been inserted properly. Once all the screws are in, we can go ahead and tighten everything up. Now it's time to plug in our last two connectors. Those are gonna come in from behind and underneath the control box. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in our final connector here. And the cool thing about these connectors is they have a special tab built in to where you can't accidentally do the wrong orientation. You just, if you can't find it, just keep twisting it until it slips in. Then once it's in, go ahead and just tighten the twist lock and you're good to go. And last but not least, let's go ahead and plug in our power connector. Okay, we're almost ready to go. Now it's time to remove the safety bolt. And really all this does is it keeps the machine closed uh, in transit. So we're just gonna twist that off like so. All right, now we can open it up. First, we're gonna pull out this locking pin we're gonna twist it a little bit so it locks in the open position, and that's gonna allow us to slide it right on. There we go. And to lock it, we're just gonna twist that locking pin. So it slides back in place, and we're ready to rock and roll. All right, let's go ahead and power on our heat press, flip the switch. Now this is probably my favorite part of getting any new piece of equipment is when you can peel the film, the protective film, off the screen. Oh, so satisfying. As you can see here, uh, we are heating up. That's obviously gonna be our temperature display, but let me walk you through all of the controls here. Okay, now in the top left, that's gonna be our active pressure readout. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Over here, we have one, two, three, different presets and each of these uh, can be set by holding the S. Tap that S for set and you can adjust it up or down wherever you want to go. Set this preset. I'm going to set this up for easy weed. You're going to hit the S again and that's going to take you to your preheat timer which is this one on top right there. Now for preheating I usually only preheat for about five seconds. Press the S one more time, set button, and that's gonna set our actual timer. Uh, easy Weed presses at about 10 to, 12, 10 to 15 seconds, so I always set mine for 12. We're gonna press S one more time. It's gonna lock in our settings for that preset. You can always change these however you want. That's gonna be for preset one. If we wanted to set presets two and three, we would just repeat those same steps I had to set it, but now every time I go back to preset one, it's gonna go and, but now every time I go, now right now it is showing my present value of 99 degrees Fahrenheit. It's heating up at the moment. If I wanna see what the set value is, you can just hit that set button and it'll show you right there. Cycle all the way through to get out of that screen and go back to showing you the present value. Okay, now let's talk about our active pressure readout. Every time you close your heat press, it's gonna show you on a scale from zero to eight how much pressure is being applied. Right now the heat press is open, so there's zero pressure. I do have it set to a pretty firm pressure, so let's see what we got. It's actually set to a medium, it's set to a P4. You also notice that right now, when I close the heat press, it didn't gauge the preheat timer. If I were to close it again, it's gonna automatically switch over to my main timer. If I open it back up, it's gonna reset and it's gonna take me back to my preheat timer. So it's always gonna alternate between the preheat 
and the main timer. If you do not want to use a preheat setting, uh, you can go ahead and edit your settings. You're gonna take your preheat setting down to zero. And now every time you close the heat press, it's only gonna activate your main timer. Just like that. Now for the active pressure readout, if we were to increase the pressure a little bit, close our heat press again, now we're getting a higher reading. We are at eight, so we are actually at maximum pressure for this heat press. Now, if we were to loosen our pressure all the way, get it really, really loose, close the heat press. Well, now we're at a two, we could go a little bit further. Basically zero is gonna be no pressure applied. Now, one thing you'll notice is that after the pre-press and before your main press, you're not gonna be able to adjust any settings at all. It's kind of in a lock mode. So if you've done a pre-press, but you wanna go back and change a setting, uh, what you could do is either close the machine to engage the next timer. That'll unlock it and you can of course go back and change whatever you want uh, or just power the machine on and off again. But just as a reminder, if you're in between the pre-press and the main press, your screen is gonna be locked. This heat press uses a dual fuse system with the backup fuse built right in. When the time comes to replace your fuse, you can easily do that by switching over to your backup fuse, leaving you with zero downtime. The TrueSpec is a true hybrid machine, meaning you could switch from auto open to manual open with a simple flip of the contact plate. When the metal disc is facing up, we're in manual mode. We rotate the contact plate. When the metal disc is facing down, we're in auto open mode, and it's that simple. When you're in auto open mode and you need to open the heat press before the timer reaches zero, simply press the emergency release right there. This is our incredibly sturdy double bar handle. And for those who may not have the reach, you can grab it right here by the pull down handle, bring it down and then finish your press on the main handle. An exciting new feature of the TrueSpec heat press is gonna be the brand new fast fit platens. Now these are all air changeable they have a multi-directional mount, meaning that you can orient them landscape or portrait, and there's no wrong way to slide it in, unlike your USB port, right? Now, they come in five different sizes. We have four by four inches, six by 10 inches, six by 20 inches, eight by 10 inches, and 11 by 15 inches. This is gonna allow us to accommodate a huge variety of products, not just t-shirts. Let me show you how it's done. And very similar to how we loaded our standard 16 by 20 inch lower platen, we're gonna go ahead and swap it out and pull in one of our fast fit platens. So again, we're gonna reach in, we're gonna pull out that locking pin, give it a little twist so it stays open. Now when we're pulling it out, the heat press may slide into the open position, that's totally fine. We're gonna go ahead and slide it right back in. And now we're gonna load our fast fit platen. Again, it has a multi-directional mount so I could load it in any direction. I do want it to be landscape, so I am gonna load it like this. You're just gonna slide it right in there, twist that locking pin back in place, and we're good to go. The lower platen is truly a triple threat. In addition to the interchangeable platens, which we talked about, it's on a slide out drawer system, which allows you to bring out your lower platen so you can safely position your garments and transfers. When you're ready to press, you slide it back in, but there's one more trick here. We have a built-in splitter, which allows you to dress the heat press with your t-shirt, meaning that the lower ply actually goes inside the shirt, allowing you to press just one side at a time. And again, when you're ready to press, you slide that back in, you're ready to go. All right, now that our true spec heat press is fully set up, the only thing left to do is press a t-shirt. So let's go ahead and slide out our lower ply in here. And thanks to our built-in splitter, we're gonna go ahead and dress our t-shirt completely on the lower platen. Of course, we wanna make sure that it's nice and centered. And we're gonna slide it in for our pre-press. Now I do have my pre-press timer set for five seconds, which is usually what I like to do for these shirts. Slide it back out. And as you can see, all the wrinkles and moisture have been eliminated from my garment, from my pressing area. So let's go ahead and position our transfer here. 
That looks pretty good. Slide it back in and let's press. Now my second timer is set to the proper time for this transfer, which is going to be 15 seconds. This is a hot peel. And there we go, a brand new t-shirt made with the true spec 16 by 20 inch hybrid auto open heat press by Heat Press Nation. And there you have it. We've now unboxed, set up, and done our first press with the brand new true spec 16 by 20 inch hybrid auto open heat press by Heat Press Nation. If you have any questions at all, feel free to contact our My Expert support team at 800 215 0894.